one example of a place where we could new, to use loops would be we're now entering the creatures directory of Nell's home directory, which contains two very real creatures data files. So now I'm using uh, a command called less instead of cat, which is basically the same, apart from the fact that you can scroll up and down with the arrow keys and you use Q to quit. And you can see there the basilisk file contains name on the, of the of the of the creature and then it apparently contains some DNA structure and some metadata. And probably the same for the unicorn. Yeah. Um, so say we wanted to move those files, so we want to rename them to to something which starts with original. It would be neat if we could do, just do something like this. So we take some file name dot that, and then we rename it to some other file name, original hyphen the same thing dot that. Unfortunately, that doesn't work because this is not a loop. It's actually completing the star to all the to all possible matches, and then it can't figure out the shell is not smart enough to realize that you want to complete this into two different move commands where you first move basilisk to original basilisk and then unicorn to original unicorn because it's only you it's completing this into one command so the way we want to go about doing this is that we want to say for each creature move this to a different file and then repeat for the next creature until we're done with all and we can do that with a for loop so the syntax for doing that is for n some name in and then the list of things that we want to run over, that we want to iterate over. So in this case, we're iterating over those two files, basilisk.dat and unicorn.dat, with a variable called file name. If we press enter now, then you can see that the shell has changed. So we used to have this uh, computer name, blah, 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 dollar. And now the shell just shows you the pipe key here. So that means that it's waiting for more input, because I've started a for loop but I haven't actually ended it yet. So it's waiting for input until I end this for loop. The syntax in bash is that you write for this, uh, then you have to write do, and then what you want to do with these things. So we can, for instance, do head minus three to print the first three line. And then we call the variable, we call the variable up here, file name. The way you, you access a variable. We'll show how this works in Python later on. But the way you tell the shell that this is a variable is by using the dollar sign here. So this is not the text file name, but the variable file name that we're referring to because we're using the dollar sign here. And then we end the for loop by printing done. For some variable name in a list of possible in a list, then you do something. And the thing you do is head minus three of that file name, and then you're done. That prints first the three lines of the basilisk files, and then the three first lines of the unicorn file. So let's see if we can get that working and put, yeah, to, to clarify a few of these things, we can show that we can actually change file name. So I haven't really shown, but you've probably seen by now that if you press your up button, then you get the last command that you typed in. In this case, that was my for loop. The way that bash represents the fact that this is multi-line is by, when you, when you go into your history by pressing up, is by using a colon wherever there's a new line rather than printing the new line. So the, co the new line has been replaced by the colon. So let's try playing this around to this. So we called this file name, but we could actually just call it f or something else. So I've created a variable here, f, when that I'm that I'm looping over, and then I'm putting that the value of that thing in down here. So that does exactly the same thing. File name or f is just a name of something that we can call anything. File name happens to be a good variable name because it tells us what it is that we expect this variable to contain, but it's just a name. If we actually wanted to do the thing that we set up trying to do. So be remember that we tried doing move up here where we wanted to rename all the files to start with original. Then rather than doing the head thing that we were doing in here, we could replace it with 
move. So now I'm moving. I'm, uh, file name will first be basilisk, so I'm doing move basilisk to original basilisk, and then I'm doing move unicorn to original unicorn. It doesn't work. Because I've got one variable here too many. So now I've moved them. We could also imagine that we had a large amount of dead files, then it gets tedious to have to write that we wanted to do something with all of them, then it gets tedious to have to write the list of all of them here. So we can also use a wildcard here and do something like this. So this matches star.dat will match all possible dat files. So even though they're not called basilisk and unicorn, but original basilisk and original unicorn now, then it still then it works. If I try doing then I'll be told that there's no such file because I just moved it. But using the this format, then it will match all just all the uh, dat files in there, so it will still work. We can even make it a little bit more explicit by um, adding another line in here. So remember that echo just prints what we put after it. So if we write something like this, do echo file name head minus three file name with a semicolon after that, and then we put two lines into our into our for loop now, where the first one just prints the name of the of the variable. So we can see the file. The first file is called original basilisk that that, and that contains those three first lines. Then the original unicorn file contains those three lines, and so on. Compared to the syntax in Python or other modern languages, then the syntax seems a bit verbose, and the do seems a bit unnecessary. And that's a legacy of it being an older language. Mostly in other programming languages, then you've chosen to to bracket things by the for and the end of the loop, whether that's unindenting as it is in Python or it's an end for or something like that. Probably see as you start working more in Bash, and when we're talking about Python, we'll talk more about that. Then there comes a time when you have to do more and more complicated things where doing them in Bash is cumbersome and the syntax seems too complicated, and you're typically better off writing a script in Python that does that part of it and then leaving the Bash script to do the relatively simple things because Python is a more powerful programming language doing things in and has a nicer and more friendly syntax. Imagine that we now, we've already we've been working with, with files that don't contain space. So now I've created a file that happens to contain a space in there. So this is a bit, well, this is a bit of a tricky thing than when you have to write this kind of thing to get it right. So if we just try to run our loop as we wrote it before, for file name in star.dat, remembering that we created the red dragon that that file, do echo, so we print the file name, and then head of the file name, and then done. If we execute that, the first two ones still work. The next file name is red dragon. But then, it actually gets confused because head gets two arguments, one red and one dragon, that, that, and neither of those are existing files. So it errors out with no, no file or, or directory with the name, and the same thing again when trying to open dragon. And that's because efficiently what we're doing inside the for loop is, is this thing, where Head interprets red and dragon as two different things because it uses space as a separator. So even if the space is inside the file name, then that doesn't match. So one way of going about fixing that is to quote the variable. So if we put quotes around it, then we tell the bash script that this is actually one thing. This is one file name and not two different ones. The other thing is the the other way is what you could see that the bash completion was doing before. So I started typing red and press tab. Then it puts a slash in there which means this is a space, but it's a space that's been escaped, as they call it. So the space is not to be interpreted as a separator, but as a part of the file name. In general, in almost all cases, then avoid spaces in file names, and then your life will be much easier when you have to deal with them in a, in a shell script. But these are the ways around it. So we could go about fixing that here by making sure that we are quoting the variable name here. And then it works again. So I just added quotes inside our our for loop around the file name when when giving the file name to head to ensure that uh, the full file name is 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 given to head. 